And we're going. Ah, welcome back, welcome back. I thought you were going to make the first introduction you usually always did. Oh, uh, what is up my viewers and subscribers? I am Mike Wayne, a.k.a. Rebel180. And what's, this... What's up everybody? Rock stars, metal heads, you know the rest. Hair mail, fan away. And you got as the cameraman, Blake Thompson. We, we don't need your introduction. Darn. Just stay off. This is this is a debate too much mind for your mind can handle. Oh come on! I was born in the nineties. He's <laughs> what you call a wrestling dumb mark. Oh. Because he always cheers for the baby faces. You don't say. Yeah. Uh, uh, to today uh, we're going to talk about. Oh, uh, by the way, um, I also need to say this might not get uploaded right away, but I'll get around to it eventually. Uh, anyways, uh, this is another Who Was Better. Ooh. This time, it's Ken Shamrock, the world's most dangerous man. And I have the lethal weapon, Steve Blackman. A.K.A. Cheesehead. Look who's talking, mister. I you, you better watch your back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, once I get that ring, I'm in the zone. I'm in the danger zone. You, you're gonna get hurt. Okay. But, but. Be fair. To be fair, since you lost the last one, you can go first again. Okay, uh, now this man is a former uh, UFC legend. He is one of the originals. And he is a UFC Hall of Famer and the very first UFC heavyweight champion. Which at the time was called Super Fight Champion. I remember that. And he is he used to have a feud he is well known for having a feud with UFC legend and creator basically of M MMA Hoist Gracie. Mm. And don't forget another UFC legend. Um Dan to be severed, one of the most excellent MMA fighters of all time. That was probably the best dude in UFC history, because those were two of the best guys. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he is also, um, he is also, I think, a former Intercontinental Champion. Yes. And he is a former NWA TNA Champion. Yes. And he also won some else in WWE. King of the Ring, yes. I was about to get around to that, actually. <laughs> We're not. Uh, he is also known for one of the dumbest feuds in the opinion of UFC owner Dana White. Shamrock versus Shamrock. Oh, yes. Uh Oh, oh, one more thing. Okay. He is also he was also given the nickname World's Most Dangerous Man by ABC News. Well, that's it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So I can go even more on Shamrock, right? which I will mention in my defense. Steve Blackman, another the main talented fighter, but he didn't go into the super fighter or UFC. No, he was just brought in to WWE to match with Shamrock. See, that's the whole thing with Steve Blackman is that. Oh, oh, one oh, more thing. Okay, he okay. is the creator of. Uh, he is the creator of the long lost match that they will never show again. Yes. An MMA style match known as the Lion's Den. Oh, yes. Some of my favorite matches were for the The best match, in my opinion, was when him and Steve Blackman actually fought. Which exposed the new rule of the weapons. Which, I don't know. I don't and know another great right? fight was Ken Shamrock versus Owen Hart. Rest in peace. That was a good match. It's just me. Before I go on my defense, is it just me, or did that whole weapons thing kind of remind you of uh, Mad Max 3? Does it kind of remind you of that when they go up and they get weapons? <laughs> the, 
the movie with two stories. And the second story made us want to brawl, brawl brains out. Good thing we didn't show it, or else we probably would have been dead. <laughs> anyways, stupid. anyways, is it my turn now? Yes. Okay, I just made sure you didn't have you any more points. proceed. Okay, I just made sure you didn't have any more points to point out. As I go for my stab in the face again. <laughs> Here we go. Back to what I was saying. He was brought in because of Ken Shamrock. Because he realized, okay, if you're going to have one guy like Ken Shamrock, you need somebody to match him. Whether it's in a few or a tag team. So you bring in this guy who has an MMA background as a someone degree black belt, C. Blackman. And I figured, okay, we got the most dangerous man. Let's give him the nickname, the Lethal Weapon. And let's have him be his own martial arts. And he did have his own personality. He always come out to the ring with his nunchucks. And always coming in with his weapons. That guy can rock weapons like no other. <laughs> Remember that line that actually brought up the nunchucks to the ring doing his shamrock? That was epic. Because you know, Shamrock always being unarmed, all of a sudden this guy's just throwing around his weapons like, eh, hey, whatever. And one thing that's always good, okay, another accomplishment can see by hat, six time hardcore champion. Six time. Now, hardcore champion back then, that was passed around like crazy, so to earn that means you were a tough son of a bitch. And he was. The uh, 24 7 rule was oh, yeah. issued by the late, great Crash Holly. Rest in peace. Man, Crash was awesome. Anyways, but he won it during those yeah. times. <laughs> Remember the weight gimmick? I stand six feet, <laughs> 500 pounds. Wow. <laughs> I am six feet tall, 280. <laughs> he was making up. It's like, I would pass him as... 5A and 160. Yeah, <laughs> that's about right. Anyways, um, Steve Blackman always knew how to get in the right spots, in my opinion. Um, the feud with Shamrock, the feuds with um, Dan B. Severin and Owen Hart. He knew the right ways to be kind of like the helper in a way. The thing about Steve Blackman was, though he, he was a mid Carter, but that's where he needed to be. He needed to be the guy that was basically supporting the guys on top. Where Shamrock was going to get that big push because he had the look. He yeah, had but the... he was never given the big push. Well, Shamrock had a bigger push than Blackman for a reason. Because you notice he was always going for Austin, the big title guys, for a reason. Shamrock had the but look. He was, but Shamrock was buried by The Rock. But, given this credit, we're looking at push here. Who does Shamrock always go against? The big guys like Austin, Michaels, The Rock. Blackman was always going guys like, at most, Foley to Crash, to Harper Holly, to those guys, They're for a reason. Shamrock had a look, the main event look, that Vince McMahon always <laughs> wanted. He but had the muscle, he had, I'm, I'm about to get to that, let's watch. He had the muscle, he had the wrestling skill. And his charisma was, hey, he was a UFC fighter, so the fans knew him. They knew him as Ken Shamrock. But those were again, his two weaknesses because he couldn't talk to the mic that well. So it was hard for him to get that push because he couldn't tell a story. To get into the main the push, you gotta talk on the mic. You gotta sell me. You gotta make me he's believe. Not, he's not worse than Sid Vicious, though. Sid Vicious is funny just to do it. That. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna go into Sid Vicious because we, uh, we got Vicious debate. Anyways. You are half the man I am. Da, 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 with, I have with, to bring to you. Not a time, man. I don't want to get off track here. Anyways, but he, he couldn't convey a message to get even into the seats. He, he didn't have a lot of charisma. But to be fair, Steve Blackman couldn't talk to Mike, but I will say this, I'd rather listen to Steve Blackman, honestly, than Shin Shamrock. Because no offense, I like Shamrock. He will be all time one of my favorites. But the way Shamrock always conveyed himself, and this is one against promos when he against HBK. Shawn Michaels, you're a great wrestler, but when I get in the ring, and when I get in the zone, somebody's gonna get hurt. I'm not believing this guy's the most dangerous man. He looks that way with his muscles, but the way he's talking, I'm just like, really? That's the best you got? Shawn Michaels, what do you got? Ah, oh, yay! He's telling him to suck it. Yeah, now that's Shawn Michaels. Big asshole. <laughs> See, I can believe Shawn is an asshole. Shamrock, I don't know what to believe. But Blackman, when he talked, he should have never talked for one day. That's what no mistake they did with Steve Blackman. But when Steve Blackman did talk, he conveyed one message. 
He's going to go out there, he's going to kick their ass. He's going to prove to them why he is a lethal weapon. He's going to go out there, take care of business, and walk off. That was what Steve Blackman's main mentality was. But where he's better is at, he knows where he's at. Steve Blackman didn't oh. need that big push. He, he was right by where he was at. Didn't need to go any further. He, he was good at those spots. The great spots were Shamrock. The great spots were Crash Holly, Hardcore Holly. All of them. Okay, go ahead. He was great up until Vince turned him into a joke like he usually, eventually does most everybody. The reason is because he believes he's better than UFC. Like what he's doing with Brock Lesnar. Yeah, burying uh, Brock, well, you know, making him job out to Cena, basically. On to, his first return. To say Super Cena is better than any MMA On his fighter. first return match. <sighs> Thank you, Triple H. I'll give you credit for putting him over at SummerSlam. With a low blow. Yeah, at least he made him tap out. And guess more fans for Chan. You tapped out. You yeah, tapped out. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, everybody was getting all over that. Like, they were like, you see, you know this guy is full of it because even the crowd doesn't believe he's a face. Yeah, they're saying you tapped out to a baby face. It's unbelievable. Anyways, but to finish out what I was saying about Blackman, Blackman was just the guy that just, you wanted him at the main event, I mean, not, not the main event spot, you wanted him at mid card because he, he was a good worker. That was what was best about him. He was a good worker, could get you in a good spot, and give him this credit. The guy could do a perfect jump kick off the turnbuckle. Take that, Rob Van Dam, and your stupid little kick that you barely can do anymore. Does he, can you can even do that kick anymore? Yeah, no, no job, Rob. It's doesn't, decent. he doesn't even lose, he doesn't even have the decency to lose the belt in a match. And not to mention his moves look terrible now. You can't even do the damn frog splash right now. Yeah. God, was terrible. Anyways, but Steve Blackman was just the guy. He was also a good submissionist, like the team Chokey did. And like I said, the jump kick off the turnbuckle. I would, I would like to see Steve Blackman versus Samoa Joe. That would be a good match. I think that would be a good spot for Samoa Joe to prove his expertise in his MMA. I definitely agree. Better than the double... M A double J challenge. I'm about to pull a sled daddy here if you don't quit that. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Double gut A. Shit! <laughs> no, I'm not doing it. Not doing it. Not doing it. Not doing it. Uh, we'll mind. get. We'll, uh, watch it now. You're gonna get. You're gonna get me for gimmick infringement. No, I'm not going to. That's why you need to shut up. I don't want to copy him. So he'll probably watch this one of these days. And probably think I'm copying him. I, I sincerely <laughs> doubt it, but just to be safe. Yeah, don't, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Anyways, do you have anything else to say? No, that's about it. I think I've said all I can say, so... I think we can just basically either decide this one with the fans or whatever. Or what do you, what do tell, you say? Tell, tell us, if, if you have time for this video, because I've seen the other videos. If you have time for this one, uh, please comment down below who you think won and who you think should have won. We can get a free vote right now. Who do you think Cameraman won? Uh, who do I think? Well, I haven't actually seen the guy you're talking about ever perform. I I've watched all the way back then, but I've never heard of this guy. The name sounds familiar because my dad's mentioned him. But Ken Shimrock, I remember. And one of the biggest matches I remember was the steel cage match between Ken Shimrock, The Rock, and Mankind. That was a match, sure. that, that was an epic match. That was also the number one contender spot for the WWF title at that time. So, my vote will go with Ken Shimrock. Okay, so uh, that's one vote. But uh, what do my uh, loyal subscribers think? Uh, please rate and comment below who you think won. And that is it for this us. One. I am Wait. Mike Wayne, yeah, yeah. a.k.a. Rebel 180, and this is Hair Metal Fan 08. So long for now. Wait, wait.
Peace, love, and rock. I catch you next time on our next Who Was Debate. We'll do a twist instead of who was, who is better between the Miz and no, no. the, what do you call, what do you call him? Huh? What do you call the other guy? Huh? I'll say it then. The It Factor. That's awesome. Catch you next time.